episode 30 of Going All In, Get the Edge You Need to Succeed. I'm Dr. Erin McKinley, and today we have another awesome spotlight session with Dr. Meredith Wagner from the Concordia College Dietetic Internship and Masters of Science in Nutrition program based in Moorhead, Minnesota. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Wagner. Tell us a little bit about your background, your journey to RD, and how you landed at Concordia. Sure. So I actually am a Concordia graduate. So I did the DPD program here at Concordia. Um, I knew from probably my second semester here that um, I love dietetics, but I also knew that I eventually wanted to teach um, in a dietetics program. So I wanted to teach college. So I knew it was the long haul as far as graduate school, um, but I really loved just the area of nutrition. And so when I finished Concordia, I applied for a combined internship master's program at Kent State University in Ohio, um, completed that program, and then uh, passed the RD exam, worked for a couple of years. I worked in clinical as well as in management um, and did some consulting work as a dietitian. And then knowing that my ultimate goal was to teach at a college or university, I went back to get my PhD at North Dakota State University. Um, then I taught for a year at the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, North Dakota, um, in their coordinated undergraduate program. And then there was a position open at my alma mater, so I returned um, to Concordia. Um, so that's sort of my role with uh, getting into dietetics and working, um, and then as a faculty, the dietetic internship at Concordia has existed since 1999. And so I started actually working with the internship in 2008. So while I was still a practicing dietitian. And so I've had a lot of experience with the internship program here at Concordia, even before I joined the faculty and um, started directing the program. All right, awesome. Well, tell us all about your program. Sure. So. Concordia's programs were located in Moorhead, Minnesota, so it is on the border with Fargo, North Dakota. So we have uh, some great benefits on being at the border of two states because we have sort of double of everything, which is really great. Um, our program is a combined program, um, a dietetic internship and a master of science in nutrition, and our emphasis is in dietetics leadership. So uh, somewhat unique, there are some more programs that are coming up with a leadership emphasis, but as I'll explain, um, we really do incorporate our emphasis throughout the program. So uh, one of the features uh, here at Concordia is we just recently um, in 2017 moved into a newly renovated science center. Um, so you can see some photographs here. It is an absolutely beautiful state-of-the-art facility. Um, we're very fortunate to be housed in the Integrated Science Center along with all of the natural sciences as well as mathematics, nursing, um, and uh, exercise science. So we have beautiful state-of-the-art facilities for our interns and graduate students. Um, some of the faculty uh, that are involved in the Dietetic Internship Master of Science program are seen here. Um, my picture is in the middle. You can see a slightly different hairstyle. Need to update my <laughs> photograph. Um, but we have faculty from our department in nutrition and dietetics. We also utilize faculty in our, or, or in our communication studies department, as well as in our school of business. So I'll talk a little bit more about how those are all integrated and incorporated into our program and specifically our emphasis. So our enrollment, we take eight interns per year, so per cohort. So we have 16 students at any given time. Um, you can tell uh, by the pictures which cohort entered this year. Um, they're donning their, their masks here, um, but it's, it's really fun. Uh, we have a, a great program and we take interns from all over the country. So our program is 21 months in duration. So um, if you match this spring, you would begin the program in August um, on site and then would conclude or graduate in May of 2023. Um, there's that little caveat to, we do have an online statistics course that our students take the July, the month of July before they start the program. But um, 
you can be right at home. You don't have to have moved to the Fargo-Moorhead area to take that course. Um, the schedule for our program, as you can see, the first academic year, our interns are purely in graduate courses. Um, so they'll take coursework and start thinking about their master's capstone project, which I'll talk a little bit about. Then the first half of their supervised practice or dietetic internships takes place in the summer between the two years. Um, so it is the full 16 weeks of summer. So our interns begin their supervised practice, um, essentially the Monday after uh, graduation, and then they go right up until the week before classes start in the fall. Then when they return in the fall for their second year, they have graduate school or graduate classes, um, continue to work on their capstone project, and then they actually finish their supervised practice rotations in the spring um, of their last semester. And that's also where they complete their capstone project. So it's a really nice blend of being able to right, um, gain additional knowledge in the graduate school classes and then apply it and then come back for some more knowledge, right, and then apply it again right before you would complete the program. Um, so here you can see the list of courses that our students take, um, right, even with COVID right now, we do have um, all in-person or blended courses. So even our blended courses, it is some in-person, some online. The one exception, as I mentioned, is the statistics and research analysis course, which takes place in the summer, and that is a purely online course and has been since we began the program. Um, so you can see it is a Master of Science in Nutrition. So there is advanced study of macronutrients, micronutrients, health behaviors across the lifespan, similar to a life cycle nutrition course. Um, we also go through medical nutrition therapy, um, and I always tell prospective interns it's not like you didn't learn about disease states or specific disease states in your undergraduate, but we kind of bring it to the forefront, review it, talk about some of the more complexities there. We also have a nutrition counseling and education course to kind of refresh your skills before you start supervised practice. Um, two of the courses that are fairly unique to our program and really tie in our emphasis in dietetics leadership are our organizational communications course. So this is through the Communication Studies Department here at Concordia, and it really is a fantastic course. Our students really like it. First of all, it's not a nutrition course, which they've had a lot of, right? It's also not a science course, which they've had a lot of. And when you're preparing to be a leader and learning more about leadership, communication is key. Um, so our students really enjoy that class um, and learning about how, right, to communicate specifically across organizations, um, but even interpersonal communication. And then the other one is our leadership theory and application course, which is offered through our School of Business here at Concordia. Um, as the course title implies, you learn about theories of leadership and then how to apply them. Um, what's really unique about this is our faculty member who teaches this course, Dr. Akins, is just phenomenal. He is wonderful. Our students love him. I try not to take it personally since I teach many of these classes when students say it was their favorite class of the graduate program. Um, but he really does a great job. He is the first to say that he knows a lot about leadership. He knows a lot about business management. He doesn't know very much about dietetics, although he's learned quite a bit the past couple of years. Uh, but he really engages our interns and wants them to see how they can become right, better leaders or become leaders in the profession of dietetic. So one of the great things about Concordia's program is even though it is a combined master's internship program is our students are able to work during a large portion of the program. Um, so that whole first uh, year in the program as they're taking graduate classes, our interns are encouraged to work. Um, and you can see some of the different settings we have in the Fargo-Moorhead area where they can get jobs. Um, and as you see, 100% of our interns, graduate students do hold positions during the whole first year of the program. So this helps them to gain experience in the field of dietetics, also helps to earn some money and help offset costs of, of living and um, tuition. So you name it, our students have done it, and there are lots of opportunities to work in the Fargo-Moorhead area. In addition to Concordia College, um, we also have two large state universities 
in our community. So there are lots of positions available. They're very used to having students um, who will start a position in September and then go through end of April, right? Leave for the summer and then come back in the fall. So many times our interns work at the same position the whole first year of the program and then the fall after they come back. The only time we don't encourage you to work is during supervised practice. So the dietetic internship or supervised practice, as I mentioned, it takes place the summer of the first year and the spring of the second year. And our program is very generalized in that you're going to get an equal amount of experience in all three main areas of dietetics. So as you can see, 10 weeks of clinical, 10 weeks of community, 12 weeks of management. The extra two weeks in management really um, kind of fall along fall along with our leadership emphasis. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean food service management. Um, some of our interns will do management um, in clinical or community settings. We also do have some specialty rotations um, that we really try to customize depending on what an intern's interests are. Um, so I can talk a little bit more about those two coming up here. So our rotation sites, one of the um, key questions that prospective students ask is, how far will I have to travel um, to do supervised practice? And as you can see, over 90% of our rotation sites are within the Fargo-Moorhead area. And the Fargo-Moorhead area, um, again, it's Fargo, North Dakota, Moorhead, Minnesota. They're um, divided by a river, the Red River. So at any given time you're driving around, if you cross a bridge, you've probably crossed into another state. Um, but it's a nice size community, roughly about 250,000 people in the entire right two communities plus surrounding neighboring communities. Um, but we have a lot of different facilities. And like I said, because we're on two states uh, or utilize two different states, we have right two Head Start programs, two WIC programs, multiple extension programs and hospitals on both sides of the river. Um, so you can see some of the facilities that we utilize, um, some additional ones that are fairly um, new. We've been using food banks. So one of our graduates is actually the regional manager at the local food bank. Um, so she's been hosting interns. We also have uh, sports nutrition rotations, um, both at the collegiate level as well as the professional level. So we actually work with a registered dietitian who is the sports dietitian for a professional football team. Um, so lots of different opportunities. One thing is I can never guarantee an intern a particular rotation site, but I do meet with every single one of our interns and I ask them um, you know, what, if you think about the three area, main areas of dietetics, what are you most passionate about or where do you really want to gain experience? I also talk to them about what size hospital, for example, or when it comes to food service, are you interested in um, school food service, university, college food service, hospital, long-term care? And I do try to customize their rotations according to where our students are really looking for experience. So I've mentioned the capstone project. So our master's program in lieu of a thesis, which is more um, traditional research, we have a master's capstone project. And I'm very clear with students that the capstone project does not mean it's any less work <laughs> than a research thesis, um, but it is more applied research. So our capstone project, um, as I, you saw in the outline of how the program runs, you would start thinking about your capstone project or what you'd want to do in your second semester. And that will, I will stimulate conversation about, you know, have you given some thought? What are you passionate about? So you get to choose your topic of your capstone um, and then you conduct an in-depth needs assessment. So basically identify what the need exists in relation to your topic or what the problem is. Conduct a review of, or conduct a review of literature. Um, so look in depth about what have other places or um, done to try to address this need or solve this problem. And then the fun part is where you get to propose how you are going to address that need or that particular um, issue that's come up. And this is where our interns can be really creative. All of this is evidence-based so that when they are done with their capstone project, they can go to potential employers and say, 
here is a curriculum or an algorithm that I developed. It's evidence-based. I can do the same thing for you. I can implement my program here. Um, so the sky is kind of the limit. And we have had graduates go on to um, continue their capstone project work after they graduated from our program. And it also has helped some of our interns get their first job. Um, the final report is my lack of creativity for coming up with a better term for the final report, which is basically just um, a report of if they were able to implement their project even on a pilot basis. For example, if they developed a curriculum for a specific population, they might pilot by teaching a couple of those classes and collect feedback from the audience or the participants and be able to report what were the successes of the program, what were some challenges and how do they anticipate overcoming those. So again, it is a lot of work, um, just like a master's thesis would be, um, but it's really fun. Our students do enjoy it because they really get to use their creativity and it can be everything from right, a program they develop. I mentioned the algorithm. So one year we had a graduate student work with our local food pantry and recognize that the model they were using as far as allocation of food based simply on number of people in the household really was not particularly effective as it relates to nutritional needs. So she actually developed um, using evidence from other um, food pantries an algorithm, a very simple algorithm that with very limited information, they could actually customize what the allocation of food would be based on the actual nutritional needs of the household. So knowing that two adult males in a household have very different nutritional needs than a mother and a teenager, for example. So it's a really cool project. Um, here are some examples of some projects that have been done. So we've had a graduate last year. She was very interested in public policy. And so she did her capstone on developing a public policy curriculum for undergraduate um, didactic programs in dietetics. And she's actually working right now with the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics to um, potentially implement her curriculum across DPD programs or make it available for DPD programs. So she's an example of someone who has continued to work on their capstone project even after they graduated. Um, We've had capstone projects in all major areas of dietetics, whether it be um, management, clinical, and community. So these are just some of the opportunities that our students have had. So cost is a big factor with any program that you're looking at. Um, here you can see these are based on what our tuition will be um, beginning in for those who start in 2021. So it's based on a per credit. Um, there's 39 credits uh, required in our program. So you can see uh, the grand total there. Um, so we do, because it is an academic program um, and it is for credit, there is financial aid available. Uh, we have a phenomenal assistant director of financial aid. Um, every time an intern asks about right costs and well, how can I afford this, I just put them in touch with Jess Christensen and she does her, her magic work, um, but she is phenomenal. She knows everything that there possibly is to know about financial aid as a graduate student. So, and she's great to work with. Um, so I mentioned our emphasis in dietetics leadership. So as you can see, it's not just in name that this is our emphasis. Um, it's incorporated into our coursework. Certainly in the internship rotations, there are opportunities and actual experiences built in where you will be in leadership positions and be expected to act in leadership roles. Um, there's also lots of opportunities, even as graduate students, to get involved in campus leadership opportunities. So I'll mention some of those here in a little bit. And then community involvement. So the mission of Concordia College um, as an institution is one of our sort of um, taglines is to become responsibly engaged in the world or brew. And this is something that the college takes very seriously um, with both undergraduate and graduate students. So we want to see our students involved in the community. Um, as a service-based profession, which dietetics is, we expect that our students will serve their community um, in some way, shape, or form. So we're always um, making students aware of opportunities to get involved and 
really showcase their skills to better their community. So here are some of the opportunities available in our program. We do have a Student Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics that involves both undergraduate and graduate dietetic students. Um, we have for two years now um, had graduate students in dietetics serve on our President's Sustainability Council. Um, so there are two students each year who are elected to this council. And the fact that we've had two nutrition graduate students elected um, within the last couple of years is, is really phenomenal and speaks really well to the quality of our students and their dedication to sustainability initiatives. Um, we also have opportunities to serve on student, student government here at Concordia. Um, one of my personal loves is um, I'm involved as a co-creator of our Taste Not Waste initiative, which is a food waste reduction initiative on campus. So Concordia um, began this initiative in 2016 and set a goal for our campus to reduce the plate waste or edible food waste in our dining center by 50% by fall 2020. And we, are, we were on track to complete that because of the pandemic. We unfortunately had to um, postpone our data collection this semester, um, but we were on track to meet that, which is a huge accomplishment and a testament to the Concordia community in taking action, so namely students. Um, we have a heart and soul community cafe. This is a pay what you can afford model. It's a pop-up cafe that is in various places throughout the community. Um, our interns have hosted meals, volunteered to serve meals at this event, and it's a wonderful event. So individuals can come, enjoy a meal, usually um, of local food that would have otherwise maybe gone to waste, and that they receive a check at the end of the meal. They can pay the amount on the check, they can pay nothing, or they can pay an additional amount if they want to donate. Um, you can see some of the other uh, programs we have. So Healthy Cooking in the Classroom is through our local YMCA. Um, Energize is physical activity, um, getting specifically for children or school-aged children. Glean ND is a program through North Dakota. So if you're not familiar with gleaning, this is actually the practice of going into fields after the uh, farmer has deemed that it's not uh, possible for whatever reason to actually harvest that field, um, volunteers will go in and actually harvest by hand uh, whatever is left in that field. And then usually they donate that to, to food pantries or food banks. Um, so we've had interns um, be involved in that. Streets Alive is actually where we shut down a main street in Fargo, and you can do any kind of activity that involves, um, right, walking, um, bicycles, rollerblades, skateboards, just no motorized um, vehicles. So really trying to get the community involved in physical activity. We also have several different uh, uh, affiliates of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. So there's a Fargo-Moorhead Academy, there's a Minnesota Northwest District, and then the Minnesota Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, as well as the North Dakota Academy. Um, the one, the reason that FENCI or the Food Nutrition Conference and Expo is in red is because this is a great benefit of our program. We have an extremely generous uh, alum who has provided funding um, for the foreseeable future so that every student at Concordia majoring in dietetics or in our graduate internship can attend FENCI free of charge, all expenses paid once during their program. So in our graduate program, being it's only two years, if you match to our program, you will be able to go to FENCI. That means your flight will be paid for, your registration fee, um, as well as your lodging while you're there. The only thing that interns would have to pay for is any sightseeing they'd want to do or meals that they might want to purchase. Um, if any of you have ever been to Fancy before um, during the in-person, in if you're at the expo, there's so much food samples to go around that you probably don't actually have to buy that many meals. So, um, but this is a great perk. And so all of our students um, were able to go this cohort that just joined us this year. Obviously, um, they're, because Fancy was virtual, they're hoping that it will be in person um, next year and then they will be fully funded to attend. Um, here are some of the pictures of interns from our program. Um, and it's kind of a random um, 
smattering of pictures, but just some things that I wanted to highlight that really speak to Concordia's program. So in the top left, um, that's Mary Jane. This is her actually participating in gleaning. So she's hand harvesting produce that would have otherwise gone to waste and just rotted in the field. Uh, the top center portion are three of our interns doing their theme meal. Um, they're actually here at Concordia in our dining service. They did an Olympics, um, Winter Olympics theme meal. So they rented a snow cone machine and had a great time. They're holding up their little gold medals. So um, we have a, a semi-professional hockey team. They're called the Fargo Four. So this uh, the picture on the top right are pictures of our interns just sort of hanging out together at a Fargo Force game. Um, um, the Middle right picture are Mary Jane and Angelica, interns who they're volunteering at that Heart and Soul Community Cafe. So they actually prepared food to serve at the cafe. The lower right picture is a group of us at Fency. This was two years ago. Um, our, di our DPD program actually won an award because we had the highest percent of our students attend Fency. Um, and again, that's in part to the very generous donation that we have from an alum. So we actually got to meet with the academy president as well as some of the board of directors. So that's a picture of all of us with them. The bottom left picture um, is a picture of our cohort. This was last year's graduating class and the previous year uh, when they were at our North Dakota Academy of Nutrition Dietetics Symposium. The middle picture is three of our interns at the Fency Internship Fair um, two years ago. So uh, you'll notice there's a little um, corn guy. So we are the Concordia Cobbers. Uh, we got this name because, and this mascot, because Concordia College, when it was founded, it was built in a cornfield. So how can you not love a dietetics program whose mascot is a starchy vegetable? So, and actually our mascot is Colonel. This is Niblet, his little mascot. So Niblet has his own Facebook page, has been all around the world. So, um, right. So he also was at Fency that year. And then the reason I left the picture on the uh, left middle is these are two of our interns. They came from very different didactic programs in different areas of the country. And they developed such a close relationship when they were in our program that when Jessica got married, Valerie was her um, bridesmaid. So just kind of demonstrates how close our interns get in terms of relationships with one another as they're going through the program. So, and they're, they're still in touch to this day. They still live in completely different states, have different career paths, um, but they're still really good friends. Um, so a couple of outcomes about our program. Um, our one-year employment rate is 100%, um, whether our interns choose to stay here in the Midwest area or go back home or other areas of the country. I stay in touch with them very um, closely, help with all sorts of um, preparing for their, their positions. Our first time pass rate is 94%, so much higher than the um, national average, um, and that is required. So we have excellent um, pass rates for the CDR exam to become a registered dietitian nutritionist. Um, our one-year pass rate is 100%. So if an individual um, didn't pass their first time, they certainly pass um, in a subsequent time before they've been a year out from the program. And then we do ask our uh, um, supervisors of our alum to complete a survey and 100% of them strongly agree that our interns have um, superior leadership and or management skills compared to other entry level dietitians. So just uh, showcasing that our emphasis truly is incorporated throughout our program as we can see in our outcomes. Um, so one of the other key questions I get about Concordia's program is, you know, if you have a fairly general program, what do most of your interns go on to do after they graduate? And as you can see, it's, it's everything and everything in between. So we've had an equal number of graduates go on to work in clinical, management, food service, as well as community. So there's a whole host of different opportunities. Um, and I've yet to hear of an intern who, to their knowledge, didn't get a position because their program, because our program didn't have this, that, or the other thing. They are a registered dietitian nutritionist 
they've met all the requirements um, and they've had a great experience. So, um, so here is some alumni feed, feedback, um, right? That our students have really um, appreciated about our program. Um, they appreciate the variety of experiences they have. I've had interns come in thinking they definitely want to do this area of dietetics and they do a complete 180. By the time they leave, they've gone to a completely different area of dietetics. Um, they also appreciate the fact that we incorporate review for the credentialing exam into our program. So we do mock exams. Um, the students take a total of eight mock exams. Um, to prepare for the RD exam. So six of those are content specific. So they'll take an exam strictly over, right, um, the nutrition care process, more of the clinical domain. They'll take a uh, mock exam over the management, over um, basic nutrition, over community. And then the last two exams are cumulative exams or comprehensive. So they're modeled directly after the actual RD exam. Um, students take them via the computer, so it's very similar. They're timed exams, just like the actual RD exam is. Um, and our students, even if they don't acknowledge it during the program, when they're in rotations and right preparing or reviewing for their mock exam that's coming up, they do appreciate it. I've yet to have any alum say that they didn't think that that was such a valuable component of Concordia's program, the fact that they were prepared to take that exam right after graduation. So um, a couple things that set Concordia apart, personal attention. Um, so I didn't mention this at the beginning, but I'm sure um, if you're wondering, Concordia College is a private um, college. It's a small liberal arts college. So we have about 2,500 students total. Um, it's predominantly undergraduate. We are one of two current graduate programs at the college. Um, so because we are a small school, we are able to give personal attention to all of our students. Um, and the fact that there's eight students per cohort, you get to know your faculty really well. You get to know your other interns very well, um, as well as your preceptors. Uh, there is a, certainly a culture of learning support. So Concordia is all about teaching and excellence and learning. So you will find tremendous resources here. You will not find a single person who won't be willing to make sure that your education is at the highest quality it possibly can be. Um, real experiences, so that obviously in supervised practice, you're in real world settings, working with registered dietitians and other professionals as you would when you reach that point in your career. Um, but there's also real world experiences throughout the graduate program and we encourage you to get involved in the community while you're, while you're here. Um, the strategic coursework that I mentioned, so our emphasis is not just a name, we really do incorporate it into our coursework and make sure that our graduates who have that master's degree and that RD credential are going to be as successful as they possibly can in whatever field of dietetics they choose. I mentioned the preparation for the CDR exam. Um, all of that is incorporated. That means you don't have to purchase or seek out prep materials after you graduate or after you finish your program. I've had plenty of undergraduate students who graduated from Concordia's undergrad program go off to internships and then actually contact me and say, can you give me, right, the preparation materials you use for the internship? And I unfortunately have to say no, right? It's one of the perks of Concordia's um, combined internship master's program. So those poor interns, right, if they did internship programs that didn't have any preparation, they have to find it their own uh, review materials, they have to pay for them. It's additional time when they could be taking the exam and starting their careers. Um, our master's capstone, again, uh, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for applied research that you can truly take with you to help you get a position in the future. Um, Concordia values, as I mentioned, we have an emphasis in excellent um, education. We are a tight-knit community. Um, so there's, there's lots of great things um, that our students benefit from here. And I mentioned the Integrated Science Center, which is a state-of-the-art facility. Um, we're actually looking at renovating um, some additional labs um, that weren't included in the initial renovation. So, and one of those will be a nutrition counseling and education lab. So that's coming up. All right. That was awesome. Thank you. 
And when you mentioned that really awesome benefit of being able to go to Fancy, mm-hmm. I now understand why I see such big crowds of Concordia students at the <laughs> airport. There, I think it was two, two years ago, the DC year, my sure. gate was next to the gate where all the students were. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of students. And then like the where the flight was going, I don't know if it was going directly to Minnesota or not. I was like, that's a lot of students. I'm like, I wonder what they do to get that many students to travel so far. No, yep. I understand. That so that's a really awesome. awesome benefit. It is. And I mean, right. Our students also um, sort of in exchange for that tremendous opportunity, they will come back and provide a short right recap of one of the sessions they did at Fancy. So they actually get to meet the Dalman. So it's Jan and George Dalman. And they are right, the nicest people you will ever meet. And they just love interacting with the students. And they'll be the first to tell you, right, don't just go to the educational session at Fancy. Get out, see the city, right? Enjoy the food. And so um, they're really great people. But yeah, it is a phenomenal experience. And Right. Even this year, they said if anyone wants to do the virtual, right, we'll fund them there. But right, we hope that students can get back to the in-person. So, because you'd be down here with us in New Orleans, right? Exactly. So you here in Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll jump right into the five questions that I ask every director that comes on the podcast. And these questions were put together with the help of some of my students to make sure that I was asking questions to get the answers they were really looking for from different directors, from different programs. So the first question is, what is one thing in particular that you just love to see when you're reading an applicant's personal statement? Sure. So um, that's a great question. And probably the number one thing is that the student wants to come to Concordia. So what is it about our program that attracts you to it? And what really will right, you bring to the program? So I think that's the greatest thing you can do with any program you apply to is really emphasize in the personal statement what it is about that program that stands out to you. All right, my second question has to do with resumes and it's a true or false question. So true or false, an applicant's resume should be one page and one page only. Either way, why? So I would say false. Um, We, you know, our uh, application committee, so we have a selection committee. Uh, We all, we look at every application we receive and, you know, we are looking for a well-rounded individual. So we do want to see what experiences you have. And I think there's also um, just the, the skill of being able to compose a resume that has applicable experiences and, you know, knowing how to convey those in an appropriate way. So I don't think it has to be limited to one page and one page only. So what is one thing that an applicant may do? And this could be in their application itself, or maybe in some sort of interaction you've had with them, email, open house what have you. Sure. One thing that they might do that might raise flat red, I'm sorry, raise red flags to where you might say this person might not be the best fit for our program. I would say with that one, probably it's, it's sort of a very obvious thing to the director or the person um, is if you haven't looked into the program, um, you know, specifically if you ask questions that are easily found on the program website or in materials that are available on our website. Um, So I certainly, I welcome students. I want them to contact me. I want to talk with them, email with them, right? Phone, Zoom, email, whatever. Um, And I'm happy to answer their questions because I want them to have a true understanding of our program and ideally, right, so they can picture whether or not this is where they want to spend the next two years and prepare for their careers. Um, but it's pretty, pretty evident, right, if they're asking, you know, somewhat simple questions like what is the emphasis of your program is, right, I just went through. Um, we're pretty, we're pretty clear on our website about the emphasis and how it's incorporated or how many students do you take. Again, some of these are pretty basic questions um, that are very easily accessible if you look through the materials that are available. Um, But certainly, right, other questions, you know, while we try to be, have as much information on our website as possible, 
there are still some, I'm right, always blown away with some of the great questions that prospective students ask. So when in doubt, I would say ask your questions, but maybe just have done a little bit of your preliminary research first. So what is one area of the program that you're actively working on trying to make even better for the interns? Sure, absolutely. Um, so we are actually hoping to grow our DIMS um, in that we want to host more than eight interns per year. Um, so we actually have an open faculty position um, here at Concordia. We're actually conducting interviews later this week. Um, so we hope to be able to expand it. And so our limiting factor right now is the supervised practice component. And so um, part of the person we hire will be to help us expand. So how can we secure additional supervised practice facilities to host our interns so that we can take more than eight per year? Um, that's something that we're really dedicated to, that we have a lot of support from the college um, and we're hoping to offer. We want as many people as possible to be able to pursue their dream of becoming a registered dietitian nutritionist. All right, awesome. So my last of the five is a two-part question. And the first part is, what would be the three best adjectives, descriptors, or phrases uh, that you feel best describe your program overall? I would say close-knit. So as I sort of mentioned, um, our, our interns get to know each other really well, both in their own cohort, in the, their class, um, either above or below them. They get to know the faculty preceptors really well. Um, as you know, I mentioned, they go on to stay in each other's lives. So we are really close knit. We have a wonderful community and sort of a community spirit that lives on even after they're done with the program. So we kind of talk about a Concordia connection. So our graduates always have that connection to Concordia. And even though we're a small school, they're right. We, we have a pretty broad reach um, across across the world actually. So there's always that ability to connect and um, right. I stay in touch with all of our graduates. You can maybe see behind me, there are a couple pictures of some of the classes of interns um, that have graduated Concordia. And so um, it's, it's a really close knit. The, the full package, um, right. Our program really is you, you get the supervised practice experience that is right, at the very nature of preparing registered dietitians, you have a excellent education, a master's degree to show for it at the end. You are prepared for the CDR exam. We go through, right, how to, right, update your resume for a, right, dietitian position. We talk about how to negotiate, right, how to do interviews. I mean, everything. So you really get the full package when you come to Concordia's program. Um, no one falls through the cracks. Everyone gets that sort of face-to-face um, -face and right, really tight connections um, to prepare them. Third thing I would say about Concordia's program um, would just be the quality of it. Um, we've Our internship has existed since 1999. Um, we are a fully accredited program. We have, uh, you know, our preceptors. As I mentioned, we have other um, colleges, universities in the area. Um, some of them also have dietetics programs. Um, that so those facilities will host interns from other places. And not to say right anything wrong with any of those places, right? But our preceptors routinely tell me how much they love hosting Concordia interns. They have high expectations for our interns, but they also know that our program um, and the interns in it will deliver on that. So I would say the overall quality of our program. All right, so the second half is very similar to the first. So we gotta think of three more descriptors to describe your ideal applicant. Oh, I like the three words. Um, I would say someone who is genuinely motivated um, to pursue dietetics. Um, and I think, right, anyone who is applying for particularly a combined program, right, is dedicated to this is something that they want to pursue. And I think if you're motivated to pursue an internship in a master's program, right, you know that this is truly where you're called to, to be. And with that motivation comes that drive and that ability to want to do your best at it. So that is something we really look for in applicants. Um, 
I would also say, um, and this tends to be a trait amongst many Ditech students, is organization. You have to have excellent organization skills just to get through the DICAS application process. Um, but certainly, right, when it comes to, right, managing graduate school along with if you are working part time and, right, when you're in supervised practice, um, being organized and having good time management skills are key. And then my last one I would say would be open minded um, because as I mentioned, I've had interns, right, come in and thinking this is the, this is the area of dietetics they want to do. And really, right, I encourage them to be open-minded to all the areas and all the rotations and all the classes, because more often than not, I would say they're surprised at how much they really enjoy maybe an area of dietetics that maybe in undergrad or in their classes, or they didn't maybe have um, experience, right, that they really enjoyed, but they find kind of a new new passion for it um, in their in the internship program so going back to applying since there is the master's component what is the minimum gpa that you're requiring of applicants great so we our minimum gpa is a 3.0 um, our average gpa if you look at our actual cohorts is closer to 3.4 um, but we do look at all um, all applications that come in. And as I said, we have a committee, we utilize a rubric to kind of evaluate them. Um, we do it all on our own. And then we come back together and sort of compare and discuss if there's any discrepancies amongst members of the committee. Um, one thing I just wanted to note, because even in the um, materials that's been updated on our website, but the materials that I provided to Dr. McKinley um, do, I believe, still reflect that the GRE is required for our program. And um, we have uh, received approval from the college to right. we no longer are requiring the GRE. Um, so that was, I think, a beneficial change that came about with the pandemic is we waived it last year, but we really looked um, hard at you know, our outcomes data and really there was no correlation between right, student scores on the GRE and their success in this particular program. So the GRE is not required um, to apply to our program. All right, awesome. So what is the typical number of applicants that you get each year? Sure, so um, last year it, it did dip. Um, I'm right, it'll be interesting to see what happens this year. Um, but we, we generally get around 40 to 50 applicants per year. Um, and again, for eight spots. Um, Sometimes, right, again, it depends on the year. Last year was a little bit lower than that. Um, so I think it, right, has to do partly because we are a smaller school uh, than our geographic location, but I can assure you, right, you can survive living in North Dakota, Minnesota. <laughs> and do you reserve any of those eight spots for pre-selects? We do not, we do not utilize pre-select. So we always, um, right, so far we've always had at least a Concordia undergrad who did their undergrad in here, um, but they, we don't have any pre-select option. So it is truly eight um, positions that are open. And when you were talking about the, the work opportunities that the students have, especially in that first year, are there typically GA positions that come open either in the department or another department on campus that might help students a little bit more than just having a job as far as getting that GA position with the tuition assistance? Yeah, so we are actually, the college is right now reevaluating our um, graduate assistant positions. Um, so I unfortunately can't, uh, wouldn't want to offer an answer to that just because it's, it's sort of up in the air right now. Um, so I can't assure, right, how many positions or what they would look like um, for this incoming cohort that would begin this, um, this coming summer. Um, but certainly, right, if those are available, right, those would be advertised and um, that would be an opportunity as well in addition to working kind of off-campus positions. We know that you definitely had to do some last minute COVID changes, first spring, and then you definitely are doing things this fall. Is there anything that you've had to change because of COVID that you've actually enjoyed and might keep doing in the future? Yeah, so um, one of the things that it sticks out, because I was just talking with a, a graduate student about it, is 
um, in their clinical rotation, our students um, select a, a patient, right, or, um, you know, that is a particularly interesting case, right, something that's really interesting to them, and they actually write up the case study for it, um, and they can go on to publish the case study if they want, right, or it can just be a presentation that they give to the um, individuals, the providers at the hospital, as well as uh, we open it up to campus and students. And the fact that it had to be done via Zoom, if you will, right, it had to be done, actually opened the opportunity for so many more people. I've, right, the attendance at the case study presentations were, right, record-breaking um, because it just allowed for more flexibility for people, right, both within the facility as well as outside the facility to attend the, the case study presentation. So um, I think there are definitely some ways that we've seen our program actually enhanced by, right, some of the things we've had to do. The other one would be we developed some modules for uh, a couple of our interns who, because of uh, the pandemic couldn't be on site for a period of time because there was maybe um, an outbreak of uh, coronavirus at the facility. So we've developed simulations. Um, and again, they're not the same as actual on-site experience, but um, they we I received very positive feedback about those simulations. And so, you know, as we move hopefully back to, right, true supervised practice, those simulations will be sort of an added benefit that interns can make use of, so. All right, perfect. So to close us out today, give us one last take-home message to potential applicants. Sure. Um, kind of along with being open-minded is really think about opportunities that exist for programs. Um, look at different programs, consider, right, applying for Concordia's program. We would love to have you. If you have questions, right, reach out to me. My email address is wagner at cord.edu. Um, you're welcome to call me. I'd love to talk with you, set up a Zoom session with you, and just find out what your areas of interest are, and if, right, if we could meet, with the, meet those with Concordia's program. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Wagner, for joining me this evening. And for those at home who want more information about the program at Concordia, I provided the link to their program website in the description below this video. And as always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode with another awesome dietetic internship. And we'll see you next time.